Hello, today we're talking about RTK accuracy. As it turns out, one of the earliest videos that I have of myself was doing RTK in May of 1994. And we're just going to verify their location to make sure they're within an allowable tolerance. When we say real-time kinematic, we're talking about GPS. There's also RTK, real-time kinematic, and RTN, real-time network. Now this program is about RTK accuracy. However, it's not a class on error theory. So I'm gonna run through this really quickly just to give us some context. Looking at the scenario shown on here, your RTK GPS unit is a one centimeter, two parts per million unit. And in the model that I use today, it includes a, a base station that's two miles away. Okay, looking at the slide, in the shorthand scenario that I have, I have a, a two meter rod, uh, a one centimeter, two part per million unit uh, with a base station two miles away. So in this case, the two meter rod, uh, 6.56 with an eight minute bubble introduces uh, an error of plus or minus a hundredth and a half. We have another two hundredths uh, built into the PPM uh, and the one centimeter equals three hundredths and that's at standard deviation which is 67 percent which means that 67 percent of the uh, measurements recorded uh, seven out of ten will be within plus or minus three hundredths so to figure out what my error would be it would be uh, a hundredth and a half in the in the bubble three three hundredths in the uh, equipment and when you do error in a series you end up with three and a half hundredths times two to make it 95 percent you add your two hundredths for uh, ppm and at the end of the day you end up with each point being plus or minus nine hundredths of course if your base station is closer that's less so you could end up with seven hundredths Okay, seven hundredths on one end of the line, seven hundredths on the other end of the line, or in this case I use nine hundredths. That means that this line is plus or minus thirteen hundredths, ninety-five percent of the time. So the question is, where are you when you get your other five percent? Conventional wisdom would say, well, if I'm within thirteen hundredths for ninety-five percent, then this is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of fifteen, you know, sixteen somewhere relative well therein is the problem no it could be almost anywhere uh not feet but certainly much more than uh, a couple three hundreds different from your, your your bubble so let's take a look at what that looks like just as a quick check on myself i borrowed this this presentation slide that you see here from Roger Frank. Roger Frank did a, uh, a study on this and in 2003, I believe this came out of a 2004 presentation. If you read through the slide, uh, he comes up with uh, the same same thing that I'm, I'm doing here. So this is just kind of a double check on, on the, uh, the accuracies that I just gave you. And to show you, this has been common knowledge for, for 25 years. Why are we talking about this today? Well, I've, I've received two calls in, in, in recently saying that uh, the, the centerline ties are substantially different than the record and uh, trying to figure out why. Somebody else called and said, our field crew, I'm new at this job. I got here and the field crew is, is out doing uh, measurements for ties for, with, with an RTK unit. And that doesn't seem right. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you what I think. I think that's nonsense. And, and why? Well, these are long ties here at 80 feet. Most of the ties around here tend to be 45 to 55. So if you're using an RTK unit to measure ties, you have an accuracy in the neighborhood of one in 900. A seasoned land surveyor can almost guess that kind of accuracy where a chain in the same, in the same distance or even an EDM for that matter, a little less accurate, uh, puts you at one in 16,000. You're 18 times more accurate to chain these distances than you would be to RTK. And then the problem is, is if you're plus or minus 13 hundredths in this instance, in your distance, and somebody sets up and, and tries to reestablish this monument after it's been destroyed, this is a, a monument perpetuation, that monument doesn't fit those ties. And that's a problem. So you, you shouldn't be measuring short distances with an RTK unit unless you, you can accept that kind of error. Uh, I don't think you should be anyway. 
I borrowed this particular slide from Roger Frank's presentation, and uh, in his presentation, what he shows is it's a four mile uh, from the base station out, and down here you'll see the seconds. And when you do all these seconds, you'll see that there's a total of, uh, I believe, about 15 minutes of observations here. And so when you look down here, what you see is is this black line here in the middle. That's the meaty, the mean of all the shots. And when you look look down here, you see that from the min or the max down to the min, he shows up to 1700s difference. Well, that's entirely believable uh, when you think about the stats that we have. And however, when you look from the the median being 1400s and you get up here, here's a tenth right here. Then you fall down to to the median. And then over here, you drop well below that. And, and, and so this period of time, if you take any period of time here, from here to here is about 30 seconds. So you have this, this falling uh, within 30 seconds and then back up. And the problem is, is at any given time, if they were all off a tenth to, to the, the, the true position, but they were all the shots were up here, it would make all of your points that you collect relative. However, in the course of 15 minutes, you have a maximum of 1700s. And so if you're out collecting monuments, let's say, and let's say the monuments, in order to get monument to monument in 15 minutes, let's say they're 100 feet apart, well, you're not relative. You're 1700s different in this time. Now understand that the northing and the easting aren't correlated. So it's not like all your eastings are relative here. If you look here at the 163 second and you look here at the 703, that's your min and max. Let's take a look at the easting. So here's my easting and see how they're not correlated. It, it's not as though your northing and easting take the same route. I have my, my min, I have another one here, I have a max, I have a min, you see each one of these. Now this is 1600. So that means at any given point, I'm off northing 1600, 1700s, easting 1600. So I have this. So if I'm collecting a point here, maybe one here, one here, these points are not relative to each other within an acceptable tolerance. So that's the horizontal, which is actually the better part of this equation. When you look at the vertical, there's 42 hundredths between the min and the max. So if you're out there staking, let's say curb over the course of 15 minutes, most curb can absorb half a foot in a 25 or a 50 foot station. And you'll see again, here, here is my, my, my average. And look, look at this. I'm, I'm hovering down here well below at 75. So I got 2,500. So I'm running. 2500 is low and then I start climbing back up up here I'm about the average of these shots these are one second uh, measurements then I'm down then I'm back this distance here is about yeah let's say two minutes so if I take an elevation I take an elevation over the course of this time here I'm, I'm almost at a 585 and up here I'm at a 15 there's there's the uh, there's three tenths right there in, in the course of less than two, three minutes. Most projects can absorb three tenths in the vertical. Now these are, again, these are Roger Frank's findings 20 years ago. I decided to redo this test. And the reason is, is I have an opportunity to try, test out GNSS to see if more satellites make a difference. So in doing so, we set up a base unit uh, about 70 feet on the roof where we have a continuing operating reference station. We're collecting at one, one second intervals for about three hours. And we don't have any air in this, uh, it's, it's on a 5 8 thread. So we don't have any air built into this model, like bubble air. We're not trying to get over a point. We're not trying to center on a point. We're not actually trying to reproduce a published coordinate. We're just taking the GNSS unit at the head for collection of data. And what do we find? Looking at the slide, you'll see that even with the GNSS, 
you'll see the uh, variations in the northing as it is plotted. These are one second measurements over the course of about three hours. And you'll see here the minimum and the maximums. And to give you a sense of the time frame, if we look at, at this particular point, at 120, uh, we, we had a, a, a plus a tenth to the northing. And over here at 124, four minutes later, uh, we, we, have a, we have a minus of, of, of a, a little over five hundredths. And so in that, just in there, you have about a 1500 swing over 15 minutes. And if you roll down here and you look at the easting, you'll see the same thing. Here we have a, 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 a plus nine hundredths at 120. And when I come down here and I look at the, uh, the other extreme of that, I have a uh, six minutes later, um, I have a minus 15. So I have about a 2,500 delta there over just a few minutes. And this goes on throughout the day. Those were the extremes, but it, it varies and it bounces. So when you get over a point and you hit register, you're collecting somewhere on this. And it's very similar to Roger Frank's findings 20 years ago. Uh, we, we had as much as a half a foot variation in the extremes of the uh, elevation. And basically, there's very few things outside of rough grade that, that can absorb this kind of uncertainty in the elevations. So these findings are, uh, speak for themselves, and that's, that's essentially what, what we're dealing with as surveyors using RTK. If you're surveying with RTK, the presumption is, is it's to be efficient and to save time. And the point being is, if you're standing on a point and you're pushing a button, collecting a shot every second, every 10 seconds, that's not very efficient. And basically we call that the donkey mash, where you just sit there and you push the button mindlessly, thinking that your solution is getting better, when technically it's not. So when you take a single measurement, if you look at these graphs, it's really no better or no worse to take five. To take five is essentially wasting time. If you know somebody doing the donkey mash, it's better just to look away. They mean no harm. They know not what they do. What are some practice tips? Well, if you demand accuracy within your boundary survey, then I would recommend static. By the time you dig up a point, you put the unit up on it, then you just start your descriptions and taking your photographs, 10, 12, 15 minutes has lapsed. Or even if you have to stand there for another five minutes, you get a much better solution if accuracy is your aim. Also, if you're using RTK, uh, RTN, if you're using it for long lines, we generally like to uh, use it if we're going to use it the line should be at least 1300 feet long and if you read if you watched roger frank's presentation he prefers half a mile this type of air can be absorbed in long measurements however i would prefer that a land surveyor tells me that this was the technology that they used when they did the survey this concludes my presentation on rtk gps if you know somebody doing center line ties it's inappropriate and I would encourage you to turn them in the, into the licensing board. It's time to put away our clown shoes, pack away the mini bikes, and work together to raise the standard of care in California. Thank you and have a nice day.